There comes a time in one's life where one must ask themselves, am I actually going to be able to make this video in time? Am I going to do everything that I wanted to? Or is that just going to stress me out because I only have three days and the first part took like five days and it should have taken like two hours? That's where I am right now. I spent the last five days making silver powder out of a bunch of coins I had. And the reason was because I want to 3D print with them. I want to make 3D printer filament using this silver powder uh, and then do some silly things like print a coin that I made out of the powder. Am I going to be able to do that in this video? No, because like I said, I spent five freaking days just making the silver powder. Instead, I'm going to show you what I did to get the powder and maybe what you shouldn't do, uh, ways to make this a little bit easier on yourself. In this first reaction, we have nitric acid dissolving the silver and other metals, mainly copper, found in the coin. The idea being that once it's in this liquid state, I can separate the copper from the silver and create a silver powder more easily than if I had just tried to grind the original coin down. As we'll see, the process did not go so smoothly. So now what I have is the silver nitrate and copper nitrate and I have various other impurities uh, in solution. And to precipitate out something that's pure silver and not everything else, I can add uh, some sodium chloride. So I have a small sample of that in here, um, my sodium chloride solution, and then uh, I've got my silver nitrate and I can just add a couple drops and you can see right away we get this nice beautiful precipitate forming. And this right here is the silver. Uh, this is actually silver chloride. And silver chloride is pretty much totally insoluble. So it's a good way to separate it from the copper. This method has a lot of advantages. Mainly because the chloride is so insoluble, I can just wash as much as I want with water and remove any impurities. The next step, and this would have been the end of it, was to convert the silver chloride back into native silver metal. There were many possible reactions, but what I first chose to do was to add sodium hydroxide to basify the liquid, and we can see that the liquid is turning brown. And what's actually happening is that the silver chloride is actually becoming silver oxide, which is brown, and it's being broken apart and suspended in the solution. And so now it's as reacted as I care to make it. And what I'm actually gonna add is sugar, regular sugar. Uh, you can use dextrose or corn syrup, but it's the sugar that's actually going to reduce the silver into its metal. I'm actually not really sure if this process worked as it was supposed to, and you'll see in a moment, but you'll also see that it doesn't really matter because I decided not to go with this method. Because I remembered that way long ago, back in high school, there was another method I had used to get silver. And what I had done there is I had exposed the silver nitrate directly to copper, and the copper in a displacement reaction directly precipitates the silver. And the best part about this reaction is it's super cool to watch and it's very direct and it seems really easy. So that's what I had decided to do and that's where my downfall was. Let's get a couple more shots of this happening because it is really cool. And that way you can appreciate, you know, some microscope images and stuff before you see what exactly my downfall was. Now, if you're a person who pays attention, you might have two questions. One is, how did I get so much of this liquid? And two, why is it actually dissolving again? And the second one is, well, that's because I actually never really neutralized the nitric acid properly. 
And that's where one of my downfalls was, was the silver was dissolving and solidifying and the copper was dissolving and solidifying and it was reacting with the acid and I ended up getting kind of a big mess. And the answer to the first thing is, well, I did this at scale and that is where you need to be doing everything correctly because if you don't, when you're doing it at scale, you're gonna have a bad time. I didn't have one quarter, I had many, many dollars. And when you're dealing with a few hundred grams of material, you better know what you're doing, which I didn't. It's a cool picture and that gas wasn't unexpected, but it's no joke. And you know, you have to be really, really careful to make sure you don't cause an accident that hurts you or others. And I should point out, by the way, in case anyone doesn't know, I actually do have a degree in chemistry. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm an expert in this particular chemistry or that I've done real chemistry in a long time. Right now, my job is as an industrial metrologist, but I do have a degree in chemistry. Uh, I've done chemistry since I was little, um, and I have at least a respect for you know the danger that this entails. So don't just immediately hop in and do this, but at the same time, if you are prepared and you've done your research and you have a reason to do it, I'm not gonna tell you not to. So again, that's where all of this liquid came from, not from one little coin, but from a bunch of them, along with some junk that my dad gave me. That's what these floating doohickeys are from. We can just filter it off and then add our copper in full scale. And if you have any foresight for this kind of thing, maybe you can guess why using hundreds of little small pieces of copper is actually not such a great idea. Something I'm having to deal with is with this flossilification and expansion, look what happens. It's rising very slowly but enough to make it overflow. That's why it's in this double walled container now. So yeah, uh, <laughs> the residual acid is reacting with the copper to make you know, various gases, mostly not so good nitrogen gases, and it's so thick that look, see? I have to pop it, which adds water, which makes it a little bit closer to the top. So yeah, I'm a great chemist. It looks like overnight this is stratified, so floating on top is probably leftover copper silver nitrate, and then on the bottom is probably fully reacted, or at least mostly reacted silver, and you know, kind of a very fine powder, a colloid maybe. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just uh, decant this top part, you know, as much as best as I can, and then I'll filter it off. I'll combine the remaining liquid with the blue part, and then I will uh, try and see if there's any silver left in there. I don't know how pleasant this stuff looks to work with, but it's not very. It is goopy and it is thick and it is nasty and it's still got like nitric acid on it. So yeah, you don't want to get it on anything, uh, but it does get on everything. And I'm kind of surprised that my yield was as good as it is uh, because I made such a mess and I cleaned it up and I made a mess and I cleaned it up and I made a mess and I can show you a couple of pictures but it just won't do it justice. I made such a mess. Remember all those bits of copper I used to precipitate the silver? They didn't just go away, and it was not really quite clear how to get the silver off other than you know picking them out and washing them. And I'll tell you, it was about as much fun as it sounds. I do think it's pretty neat though that even though the original solution looks absolutely terrible, after you filter it off, the Copper nitrate looks as blue and perfect as ever. So let's go through this, shall we? It's been like four days. It's Thursday, I started on Monday. And I've been getting silver this entire time. I've been trying to make silver powder. So here is tier one after all that. This is like the first thing that went off. It's minimally contaminated by copper, but there's still a little bit of copper nitrate in it. Um, 
and presumably maybe a little bit of silver nitrate. And I know that because every so often you get a little blue tinge you can see of uh, the liquid on top. And I filter this and I wash it a bunch of times, but there's, it's very persistent. So that's tier one. Tier two, this is what was left at the bottom and it's got um, some copper shavings in there, like, like little pieces of copper mostly, mostly nuggets. Uh, but anyway, this is tier two. Um, it's a significant amount. And then tier three, I'm just gonna put this like in a little vial. I'm not gonna use it. It's contaminated by copper. This is like after I've been washing everything um, and then I washed it all and then I shook it and I, it's tier three, okay? Uh, this is pretty low concentration. Um, I still dispose of it safely. And then I've got a lot of copper nitrate and probably some silver nitrate in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to crash out any remaining silver nitrate just quickly with uh, chloride, which is what I really should have done in the first place. I'm gonna add some chloride. You'll see it'll um, get white if there's anything in there. And then I will reduce the copper back into the metal, decant the rest, and then I'll be able to dispose of it. Now we get a chance to see whether there's any remaining nitrate, uh, silver nitrate. And just a reminder, what will happen if there is is we will get a white precipitate when the sodium chloride, which contains just chloride, reacts with the silver nitrate to make uh, silver chloride. Place your bets. Oh wow, nothing, nothing at all. If so, if there was any remaining silver at all, we would see a very, very evident white precipitate. Uh, and there's nothing, which is great. That means we got all of the silver out. We just did a terrible job of separating it from everything else. Oh no, music. Oh no, music. Oh no. So here's my B list. It's got basically like little black particles, um, which I think is just probably silver oxide and copper oxide. I'm sure there's little bits of copper in here. Uh, I'm just gonna say, well, you know, um, it's sterling silver has copper anyway, and I'm just gonna accept having a bit of impurity in it. I don't think there's any other choice for me. And if I see any copper, of course, like any larger chunks, I'll obviously take them out. This is a terrible camera angle. Filming is hard. Like, you know, it's hard enough to do this stuff. And then I've got a crappy little tripod. You gotta try and focus on the camera while making sure that you don't mess up what you're doing. I'll add, then I have to edit the stupid thing. I'm doing that right now. It's Friday night. Do I want to be doing this? No. Is anyone going to watch it? No. A nuclear buff might tell you about how during the Manhattan Project, they used silver instead of copper for equipment to separate uranium. And then after the war, they actually burned down the wooden scaffolding and other areas around the equipment that they used the silver in to recover all that silver. And I, I think I should have saved all of my gloves and equipment and burned it down and seen how much I lost that way. It doesn't really even look silvery, it's, which is kind of sad. Like after all that work, you'd expect the result to at least be beautiful, but silver isn't really that beautiful, which makes me wonder why I'm doing this. So the big mistake I made was trying to grind it before it was completely dry. Because what I found out after basically hours of grinding and sifting and grinding and sifting was it's not the fact that they're actually lumpy, it's the water making it lumpy. So just a word of advice, make sure it is completely baked 100% dry before you try to grind it down because it's pretty much already a powder. It's just the water keeping it all lumpy. And that right there is the fruits of my labor. 227 grams of somewhat pure silver, I hope. As for yield, I'm a little suspicious actually because, and because. In any case, I hope you enjoyed that fun little bit of me messing around with chemistry. If you like that, 
please stick around for part two where I hopefully get to the actually making of the filament and then hopefully, hopefully, hopefully making stuff with the filament, the sintering, and figuring all of that out. That's all I've got for now. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.